So uh, now let's take a look at clusters rollout and in this rollout you can define properties for clustering your tets into groups which you can later explode to fragments and uh, just like with damage uh, this check button initiate clustering and when this check button is on all the changes you will see here in real time and for now there are three types of clustering as radial by half and by point cloud and this is the order uh, in which uh, modifier perform them uh, because you can uh, use all three of them together and if you use uh, radial and by half uh, modifier first will do all the radial clustering and then for the new clusters it will start using by half clustering if you use all three of them it will perform radial first, then it will, use, will uh, create cluster using by half method and for uh, all the new clusters it will create by point cloud. I will start right now uh, by showing this by point cloud method. This is the fast method and it's useful for creating uh, a lot of uh, small um, fragments. So all you need to do is just uh, set here the amount of fragments you want to get and right now you don't see anything here because our uh, cluster is not glued so I will turn on glue here and mesh all out now you can see all this inner uh, surface also you can use this preview to start see what's happening inside uh, inside these fragments also I will set mod ID to so you'll see all the inner faces. Uh, this method works uh, uh, just like Voronoi. It creates point cloud and uh, then separate uh, all the tets uh, to closest uh, uh, point. Also, there is uh, this cluster allowed, and if you by po uh, for point cloud method, it shows you all the points here. Also using this cluster's uh, gizmo, you can define the area which you want uh, to clustering. Uh, all the tests outside of this gizmo won't be clustered. So uh, let me show you small amount of point cloud method. As you can see in this mode, if you use just low amount, you will have all uh, these straight edges. So now this fragment looks like Voronoi with noisy edges. Uh, so uh, I advise you to use this method for creating high amount of small fragments because this is the fastest method. Okay, I'll turn it off. Next is by half. Uh, and if you use the refire uh, pro boolean fragmentation method, then you will be familiar with this uh, clustering type. So uh, with one iteration, it simply uh, divide all the clusters to two pieces. And uh, next, uh, it takes the biggest cluster and cuts it to two pieces again. And then it do next iteration again, takes the biggest cluster and clustering it and uh, divide it to two pieces and so on. So with this method, uh, you can create uh, fragments and this method is uh, not so fast as by point cloud and I suggested I suggest you to use it for creating small amount of noisy fragments uh, next property is angular and uh, if I will set it to zero I'll also let me set noise trend to uh, zero as well so now you can see all the uh, clusters are look like blocks. For some cases, might be useful again. And adding angle uh, will make it look more chaotic. Again, just like a regular free fire pro boolean fragmentation method, uh, it works very familiar. And using variation, you can add some variation into size of your clusters. So if it's zero, all clusters will have pretty the same size. If uh, it's uh, 100, which is the highest volume, 
then you will get big big uh, clusters and small clusters as well and next properties are noise uh, then I'll use one iteration so right now noise is zero so uh, the plane which cuts uh, all the clusters is just uh, flat and increasing this plane, the green the noise strength, uh, you can get more noisy fragments. And uh, also there is noise scale. So the higher the noise scale, the more smoother will be your fragments again. And with lower value, you will get more noisy fragments. And now, just as I said before, you can use by point cloud as well. So right now, you have two pieces, two clusters created by this by half method. And if I will set here, let's say 50, I'll give it set 10. Okay. You can see that uh, now it starts clustering uh, this clusters further. So it's good to uh, to combine this method together. Okay, next uh, clustering type is radial, and uh, to show you how it works, uh, I'll set noise strength and noise scale to zero because uh, radial type uh, uses this noise strength and noise scale from this by half. So I will set it to one, and just like by half. It also cuts uh, uh, all, cl all clusters to two pieces, but uh, when half start, every new, uh, every next half iteration takes biggest uh, cluster and uh, cut it further. Uh, by radial type, uh, cut all fragments together again. Also, it shares this angle property. So, with highest value, there is a random angle, and with zero value, the angle angle will be equal for all these cutting planes. Uh, and now, if uh, uh, I will decide uh, to cut uh, this cluster seven further, I can increase by half, and by point cloud to get even more. Uh, random fragments. So uh, another thing you should know about radial type is that it, it uses this center uh, uh, sub-object helper. Uh, this one, as you can see, it has this uh, arrow which defines uh, the, ang uh, the axis in which it works. So if I will, okay, let me move, if I will move move it, uh, my uh, radial fragmentation type also will move, uh, my radial uh, clustering type. Okay, also you can rotate it. Uh, okay, I will turn it over because this is the slowest method and uh, I suggested to use it uh, carefully because it, it uh, can create a lot of fragments, especially if you use very high noise. So let me increase noise. So as you can see, with high noise, uh, using uh, a small amount of uh, radial clustering type, uh, you can create a lot of fragments, so use this carefully. And again, if you want to add other, fragment, uh, other clustering types, you can cr create add them as well. Okay, now let me show you this options group. Uh, in this group, you can define random seed and uh, center bios. This property might be minus one and uh, plus one. Uh, 
zero uh, default value zero means that it uh, doesn't affect anyhow but if let's say I will use point cloud uh, 100 uh, if I will increase center BIOS you'll see that it start moving all the point closer to the center sub object helper and if I will use negative values it will do opposite it will move all the points from the center let me move these clusters so you'll see Okay, uh, next property is use damage, and this property is disabled by default. Uh, uh, to enable it, you should use damage. And um, I will turn off clusters. Now I will add some damage here. I will use value noise with higher, uh, with lower frequency. Let's say something like that. Okay, so this is my damaged object, and uh, now I can I can go to clusters, and uh, in this case I will clustering uh, what was left by damage, and uh, if I want to damage, dam uh, if I want to clustering damaged area, here I can use turn on this use damage checkbox. In this case. Uh, the area which was just clustered, it will be, it will become just one element, uh, and the modifier will return back all the damaged volume, and it will clustering all this damaged volume instead of uh, of uh, this area. So again, I can, at the same time, I can change my damage here and get completely different area clustered. If I will turn on damage. It will cluster all the uh, all the tests. So I guess you got the idea. When it's off, it clustering what was left by damage. When it's on, it clustering damaged volume. Okay, now I will turn on damage and show you what debris means. And to do so, I will use by half method. So this is my uh, two clusters. So right now I have two clusters. And sometimes when you simulate such uh, some kind of demolition or uh, if you break some object, it might looks very weird if you have if it if it was broken just uh, two pieces. And uh, you may you, you of course you can create some debris using particle flow. But using this uh, debris uh, options, you can create actual geometry debris. Uh, first property is layers. So if you increase it to one, you will see that it uh, took one layer from every from this uh, cluster and this cluster, and uh, did not uh, and used them uh, separately. So let me decrease the preview. So here you can see that uh, there is one layer of uh, debris between these two clusters. I can increase amount of layers. This way I can create a lot of debris. And now finally you can see here that I have right now 729 debris. Uh, now I can see that there are uh, there are just simple triangles, simple tetrahedrons, and to prevent this, you can use this tessellate checkbox, so it will make them look more uh, more roundy. Uh, another way to add some random uh, randomness into this debris is to use a scale property. So, uh, as well as one, all all they will have uh, the original scale. By decreasing it, you can randomly scale them down, so I will have small and big debris. Uh, if you don't want to have a whole layer 
over uh, between these two clusters you can set it to zero and increase amount in this case it will uh, randomly start creating uh, debris so at some uh, areas there will be debris and some areas won't have them but if you're sure that you have a lot of debris you can simply uh, set it uh, increase layer property so basically one layer is the same as setting amount to 100%. In this case, you can set to layer one here and start increasing amount to start uh, increasing debris, uh, taking them from second layer. But if you don't care, you can just increase layers property. Also, there is uh, this min size and max size properties. Uh, they define the size of uh, is small clusters of debris so if I will set it to one I will get all the debris separated into uh, turn all this to select every debris right now uh, contains just one uh, tetrahedron but it may look uh, not so real so if you want to create bigger uh, debris you can start increase this max size in this case there will be debris which will have just one element one tetrahedrons uh, just like this one and the maximum one will have 92 uh, tetrahedrons so if you want if you don't want to have this small debris you can increase mean size as well so in this case you will get only uh, big debris in this case you can create just very few debris elements Basically, that may uh, work just like clustering, so if you uh, increase layers. This way you can define uh, clusters by the amount of tetrahedrons. So we can say that this is kind of fourth uh, clustering type. And the last property is uh, remove all, so sometimes you simply don't want to have this debris and this way you can create some gap between two clusters Uh, so uh, this is how work the breeze. Um, and the last one is preview, but I already show you. It simply scale down all the elements, so you will be able to see what's happening inside. And using color preview, you can add some uh, vertex color. So if you want, don't want to scale, you can see what's happening using this color checkbox. Okay, uh, now let's uh, let me show you uh, the next rollout. It's mesh rollout. In this rollout, you can uh, define uh, properties for interfaces. And the first one is glue. I will show you how it works. It simply removes all the unnecessary tetrahedrons which you don't need to have in your scene with uh, such clusters and uh, relax allows you to relax all the interfaces and tessellate allows you to add detailization you also can use uh, refer asperity for adding detailization but this is a built-in method uh, which works fine for the most of the cases and uh, using the smart id you can define material id for interfaces and using map scale you can define uh, uvw uh, map scale so let me show you
Okay, uh, that's it with this interfaces uh, options. Uh, the next one is advanced group, and in this group you can define some advanced properties. Uh, well, I will explain them later. I don't want to spend your time right now for that. You can also check online help to check what this all the properties means, but I don't suggest you to change them. Uh, sometimes if you hit fragment and uh, shutter does not fragment the object, you can try to turn it off. And in this case it may uh, work and you will get your fragments. Okay, uh, next rollout is explode and uh, this it works just like a uh, regular explode rollout and uh, other uh, modifiers. So when this delete after explode is on, after explode you get your fragments and the original object is exploded. Uh, if it's off, you will get your fragments and your original object uh, uh, still here. So here I have this fragments separated into s into objects. Now we can simulate them. Just a simple edit mesh, edible mesh object. And assign, using uh, assign random color, you can add some random wire color for them, so they will look like uh, okay, like this. And uh, next property is glue before explode. It might be useful in case you don't have glue on, and if you will explode. In this mode, you will get all this, uh, all these tetrahedrons, and sometimes you may forget uh, to turn on glue. So when this glue before explode is on, uh, when you explode, it is always turned on glue. It will create glued uh, fragments. And explode by elements mean that if your object consists of several elements, uh, it will uh, explode. Uh, it won't explode by clusters, but it will explode by elements. So I guess this is it for now. Uh, later I will uh, create more video tutorials uh, on how to use this modifier for actual demolishing stuff. Uh, so that was just a little overview of all these features. Uh, so you will know how they works and how you can use them. Uh, so thank you for watching.